Welcome to the online worship service of the Good Shepherd United Methodist Church for February 26th and 27th of 2022. We are celebrating the transfiguration of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with this worship service. We're glad that you're here with us and we um, look forward to time spent together. Good Shepherd United Methodist Church is committed to being a safe space. So we invite you all to please wear your masks when you come to the church. Um, please practice social distancing. We do encourage folks to be vaccinated and to receive the booster because there are many medically vulnerable and at-risk participants in our church. And we certainly want to take care of them as well as take care of ourselves. So uh, please let us care for each other in these ways. We also have in-person worship here at Good Shepherd every Saturday at 4.45 p.m. We gather in the sanctuary and also on Sunday mornings at 9 and 10.30 a.m. we gather in the sanctuary for worship. Sunday school is at 9.15 um, in the worship center in room two. Wonderful lessons there taught by Larry Massing with a wonderful group of folks who meet together. Please connect to our Good Shepherd United Methodist Church and share this presentation with others in your email contact list. You will see how to do that in dialog boxes that are above or below this presentation. Just click on those links, then they'll take you to the website, they'll take you to our current email a newsletter that's being sent out, and also to our giving portal so you can uh, dis, dis, uh, support the ministry here. Good Shepherd does serve in the community in Jesus' name. Uh, we are collecting always half-pint water bottles, pill bottles, and laundry detergent. We put the laundry detergent in the water bottles and distribute those along with hygiene products. You can bring um, body wash, uh, deodorants, uh, toothbrushes, um, all kinds of items like that to the church, and these are distributed through the All Souls Community Outreach Center where we uh, serve alongside uh, the All Souls Episcopal Church in their ministry to the, to the uh, working poor in our area. The numbers of folks who are in need are ever increasing, so we do ask for your support. Ash Wednesday is coming up on March the 2nd. There will be a worship service at noon in the sanctuary to um, mark the beginning of Lent, which is Ash Wednesday, March the 2nd at two, excuse me, at noon with a worship service in the sanctuary. On the 4th is the Spring Craft Show and Bake Sale here at the church on Saturday morning from 9 until 1. Everyone is welcome to come. Uh, there will be wonderful vendors and crafters and great things to buy and share. It will be a wonderful bake sale to get lots of goodies. Uh, the goodies are the bake sale items. Will be The proceeds will be used to fund the missions giving of the United Methodist Women. Also, with the coming of Lent, we will start a new community group Bible study, Entering the Passion of Jesus, a Beginner's Guide to Holy Week, written by Professor Dr. Amy Jill Levine. A wonderful study. I invite you to be part of that in community groups around the neighborhoods here. Also at the church on Wednesday evening, we have an opportunity to gather and to study these six weeks of Lent, this six-session study, um, to help us to understand the, um, the breadth and the depth and all, the, all that is going on in uh, the story of the passion of Jesus, which we celebrate uh, and uh, recognize during the season of Lent. Adult choir ensembles are meeting on Thursday afternoons at 3 p.m. The handbell choir meets on Thursdays at 9 a.m. Thank you for connecting to our church. You may do so in other ways as well. You can uh, look at our Facebook page and find information about us. We have a YouTube channel. Subscribe to it, and you'll always be updated about when new presentations are made. We have an e-newsletter, which is mailed out with your email address. We'll gladly send it to you each week. 
and our giving portal, which can be found at mywell.org slash give slash goodshepherdumc. Thank you for your support and for your participation in our worship service today. Pastor Leah is now coming to read the psalm for the week, Psalm 99. Welcome to this service of worship in the Lord, in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The Psalm for the week is Psalm 99. The Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. God sits enthroned between the cherubims, let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion. He is exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king is mighty. He loves justice. You have established equity in Jacob. You have done what is just and right. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. God is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel was among those who called on his name. They called on the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They kept his statutes and the decrees he gave them. Lord our God, you answered them. You were to Israel a forgiving God. Though you punish their misdeeds, exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord our God is holy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We come to our time of joys and concerns. We want to lift up Paul Perry as he continues his treatment um, and recovery from his kidney stone. Uh, we want to lift him up and also members of his family. Carla Holt, as she has continuing sinus infection issues. She's had this infection for a very long time and hasn't been uh, bearing many treatments. We want to lift her up in our prayers. Arlene Fenn uh, has asked for prayers as her cancer uh, has spread, and she is also recovering from uh, COVID-19 infections. Uh, Randy Stocker, who is in Indiana, is struggling with lung and breathing health issues. Um, we want to lift him up in prayers. This is from work-related uh, illness um, that has been long uh, he's been long bearing, and we also want to lift up in our prayers and give thanks to God for Chuck and Kay Twa, who are, have been devoted members of our church uh, for many years and served in many, many capacities. They will be traveling, moving to Indianapolis in the coming week to reestablish their forever home near family and friends there in the Indianapolis area. And we certainly want to wish them God's speed and mercies and God's peace and blessings in their new home among their family. Let us now join our hearts together in prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, whose nature and ways are far beyond our understanding, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus, who lets us see your face in his, who shows us your love in his actions, your grace in his manner of being. In him too, O oh God, we see ourselves as you would have us be and as your power, your grace is able to make us. Make us more like him now, we pray, O oh Lord. Hear our prayer.
Lord, we often find ourselves weary, tired out by a load of care, a heap of responsibility and concern. We hunger and thirst and often fail to stop to listen, watch, wait, and receive that which you have prepared for us. Lord, grant us just a glimpse of your glory. Fill us with your spirit. Refresh us, fill us, and make us new. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray that your glory may fill your church and give to your people everywhere the energy to shine wherever there is darkness, disunity, persecution, or despair. Hear our prayers for peace in this world. Hear our prayers for light, life, hope, and healing. Lord, hear our prayers. Father, we pray for those that we have named in our sharing time and for all those whose names are upon our hearts. Grant to them health and wholeness, peace and joy, strength and hope. We remember them before you now, and Lord, hear our prayers. Give us all, O Lord, a greater love of your holiness, a greater delight in your mystery, and a greater joy in seeking your presence. Empower us to move at your side and follow where you would lead. We ask this through Jesus Christ, who revealed your glory to us and taught us to pray to you as one family, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We give thanks for your gifts, your offerings, your tithes, your gifts, which are given to the Good Shepherd United Methodist Church, for it is by your support that we are able to be in ministry in our community and to the world. We give thanks for all of your good gifts. You may give your gifts to the church in person. When you come to worship, you can mail them to the church. You can use your online banking opportunities to send funds to the church, or you can use the secure my Well Giving Portal of the Good Shepherd United Methodist Church, which is found at mywell.org slash give slash Good Shepherd United Methodist Church, UMC, Good Shepherd UMC. We have a wonderful offering of music now presented to us by the Handbell Choir, Christ Whose Glory Fills the Sky.
Our scripture lesson for the day is the transfiguration found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 28 to 36. Luke, chapter 9, verses 28 to 36, the transfiguration. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. As Jesus was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them. And they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and did not tell anyone at that time what they had seen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So what's next? What's next? I present the transfiguration text every year from one of the Gospels because I really feel that it is foundational in our understanding of Jesus Christ. This text is always read at the end of the season of Epiphany to close the first act of the story of Jesus. As Jesus changes his appearance and the disciples see him in a different light, we all get a glimpse of Jesus' identity, his mission, and his purpose. From simply being a rabbi, a wise teacher, a compassionate healer, now Jesus' purpose is clarified as we hear in the words in the 31st verse, as they were talking with Jesus, they spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. This is a shift. This is a turn for Jesus. Now, Jesus has already asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? And Peter has answered, just in the days before this scripture, the Christ of God. You can find this in Luke 9, 20. But the disciples have no idea really what this means beyond what they have already been taught as good Jewish followers, they know who Messiah is. They know that Jesus as Messiah, as Christ in the Greek, is to be the national deliverer, the holy king, referred to in Psalm 99. Now, eight days later, Jesus is offering them a preview of the next act of his life story a new view of Messiah. Now, today's story takes place on a mountain, presumably being closer to God. It is a, a high mountain. It's a holy event. We don't know which mountain in the Gospel of Luke. You see, mountains were always common places where God would meet people, remember, into the Old Testament that there were three chosen people, chosen witnesses. This establishes the truth and the accuracy of the unfolding events. 
Even in a Roman court of law, there would be no question that this actually did take place because three witnesses saw it. That Jesus is praying at the beginning of this story tells us of his spiritual discipline and humble obedience to God. Notice that Jesus does not initiate the transfiguration. Jesus is participating in God's revelation of him to us all. That Jesus' face grows bright white is actually reminiscent of the face of Moses after he visits with God in the Old Testament. That Moses and Elijah appear and speak with Jesus also calls us to look back as well as forward. Moses and Elijah, remember, did not die. They were actually taken directly to heaven to be in God's presence. They are God's messengers coming back to Jesus. They are not reminiscing about the good old days. I believe that they're actually telling Jesus about the coming days of his arrest, his trial, crucifixion, and eventual resurrection. They are assuring Jesus of God's continuing presence with him. Jesus had announced his coming death to his disciples, but now the story is fully revealed to us all. The depth and the nature of the story is expanded. The disciples and all of us truly start to get a glimpse of the full nature of Jesus in this moment. We already know Jesus as a human person in the first chapters of Luke, as he has been a teacher, he has done healing, he's been acting with the disciples with great authority and power. It's clear that he is a very important person. He's the son of man. He is among us as us. He feels as we feel. He acts as we act. But now we are reminded that Jesus is also God's son and fundamentally different than us, but more. He is son of God and son of man all at the same time time. Now that Peter is amazed and wants to show great respect and honor, but doesn't really understand is evident in his suggestion to build three booths. Peter is repeating the practices of pious Jews to construct booths to remember the provision and the deliverance of the Hebrew people as they were coming from bondage in Egypt and receiving the promised land as a home. Great thought, Peter, but you're kind of missing the point. You see, the salvation of Jesus that Jesus is offering is not limited to a specific time and place or memorial events. The salvation of Jesus is eternal, and it is an everlasting home that is being provided for us through Jesus. Then comes the cloud and the voice of God. God is a cloud and voice connects the stories of Moses, Elijah, with the baptism and transfiguration of Jesus into one continuous experience. At the baptism of Jesus, people heard God say, you are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. We saw this at Luke 3.22. The disciples now hear God's voice again, which sa- and, and God's voice says, Then a voice from the cloud said, This is my Son, my chosen one. Listen to him. Did you hear the shift? God is pleased with Jesus' obedience at the baptism. Now, God is telling us to listen to Jesus. Jesus has obeyed God. Now, we must obey Jesus. Jesus has authority and power 
equal to God. Jesus is not just a teacher, a mentor, a nice guy. Jesus actually is God present with us. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. For the disciples, this represents a wonderful promise, but still just a prospect. The disciples had witnessed the transfiguration, but had no way to understand its full meaning, its all its impact. That is why today's narrative ends, I believe, with the disciples being in stunned silence. They can't yet make sense of it. They must continue to walk with Jesus through the events of going to Jerusalem, the crucifixion, the resurrection, the ascension, and the coming of the Holy Spirit and the formation of the church to put it all together. Now, we know the rest of the story. And we should realize the power and the reality of this promise of Jesus. Our good news is that knowing the whole story, we can fully participate in the divine drama of God. The mystery persists. How did this happen? But the meaning, the impact is obvious. Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Jesus is far more than a wise teacher, a compassionate healer, an influential leader. Jesus is the Son of God who has come with a mission to save humanity from our sin and death. We are witnesses to his glory and promise. We get to participate now in the eternal and everlasting grace and love of God made known through Jesus Christ. The end game is not in doubt. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Our faith in Jesus is empowered with the assurance that Jesus is who he says he is, the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior. As vast as any theological concept of who Jesus is, Jesus is also now as close as our breath. Emmanuel is not just a little sweet baby idea. Jesus has grown up. Jesus is transfigured before us. So let us come off the mountain and follow Jesus each and every day, confident in the future as his disciples. Let us move forward in faith as disciples of Jesus Christ and share the good news with others to build up God's glorious kingdom. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Pastor Leah will now come and offer us words of blessing and benediction. The Word of God found in Ephesians 1.17. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for revealing yourself to us in Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We thank you for calling us by name. We thank you for asking us 
to follow you. We love you, our Lord and our God. Lord Jesus, we believe that you are the way, the truth, and the life. We rejoice in your presence. Holy Spirit, we pray that you will guide us to follow Jesus all the days of our lives. We thank you for the many blessings we have received. For you are a refuge and strength. We give you our honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, receive the blessing of God in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Shalom, my friends. Go now in peace. <laughs>